let's consider a separation of variables problem involving cylindrical coordinates. So the problem is, let's think about how a wave on a drum behaves, a circular drum. So consider a rubber membrane that is stretched over a circular frame. And that circular frame has some radius r, for instance. And we're interested in the vibrations of this membrane. So we want to know what the vibrations z, let's call these vibrations z, of the drum uh, do. And so these vibrations are going to obey some equation, some partial differential equation. In fact, they'll obey the wave equation. And so the wave equation will take the form that the second derivative with respect to time of z is equal to the speed times the Laplacian of z. And again, z is just the height of our membrane. So we want to be able to solve this equation, but now we can't do it just in one dimension. Uh, we have to use cylindrical coordinates, a curved coordinate system, because our membrane itself is uh, in a nice curved coordinate system. So we're going to use cylindrical coordinates. So we'll describe z as a function of s, phi, and t. So then the Laplacian, we can look this up. Uh, the Laplacian in cylindrical coordinates is this for s derivatives, and then in the phi direction, you just have a second derivative with respect to phi, and then a 1 over s squared. This is pretty ugly, so let's make a simplification. Let us only consider rotational symmetry, uh, or problems with rotational symmetry. Namely, we're going to get rid of our phi dependence so that uh, our wave only depends on the radial coordinate, s. There's some reasons for why we want to do this. It has nice symmetry. Um, also, the, uh, what we'll learn will be more applicable in the general case, so let's make it simple. The boundary conditions that we want, well, on the edge or the boundary of our drum, the membrane is fixed at s equal to r, so z, the fluctuation of the membrane, should be zero at that boundary. Also, it'll be important for us to note that we don't want our membrane to blow up anywhere. That seems rather uh, obvious, but uh, it turns out it'll help us later. So we don't want it to blow up. So let's just summary, summarize how uh, far we've come. So the problem we're interested in is we want to solve the wave equation, equation on a circular domain from a circular membrane. And when we get rid of phi dependence, then we just have the second derivative with respect to time is equal to the uh, derivative with respect to s, namely the Laplacian with respect to s over here. OK, we have a set of boundary conditions as well that we're going to impose when we're solving this equation. And the boundary conditions are that the edge is fixed, and so z at s equal to r is 0, and z inside doesn't blow up at any point. Again, that seems like a reasonable thing to expect. OK, so we're going to solve this using the technique of separation of variables. So the main uh, a technique in using separation of variables is to first make an ansatz. So we have to make our ansatz for z. So we're going to say z as a function of s and t depends on r are on s and on t through two functions called r of s and t of t. We could have called it s of s, but um, let's just call it r of s here. And we're going to plug this into the wave equation and separate this out into two ordinary differential equations. So we turn our partial differential equation into two ordinary differential equations. OK, so we put that into our wave equation, and we get a second derivative with respect to time on the left-hand side, and then the r ends up inside this derivative on the right-hand side, just times t. If you divide by the combination of r times t, then you get the kind of classically separated equation, where it's only t on the left-hand side and only things that depend on s on the right-hand side. OK, so that means that both of these sides must be a constant. So t double prime over t must be some constant. Let's call that v squared times p. And the right-hand side must also be a constant. 
namely, 1 over s d by ds of s dr ds must be some constant times big R of s. So usually at this point, we have to figure out whether we want to choose p being positive or p to be negative. So here we can kind of guess our way to that answer by thinking about what happens for t of t. We expect it to go something like a cosine of t or sine of t because it's a vibrating membrane. We don't expect it to be exponential, like e to the t or e to the minus t because it's a vibrating membrane. So that tells us that p, the constant here, has to be a negative constant. So let's write it as minus k squared so that it's definitely negative. So this should be something that's negative. OK, so now we can write our two differential equations in kind of standard form so that we're ready to solve them. So uh, one of them is the equation for capital R of s. And so this is equal to minus k squared R of s. And then the other equation is an equation for capital T, which is T double prime is equal to minus V squared K squared times T of T. And in the next video, we're going to spend some time solving these and imposing our boundary conditions to see what types of solutions we get.